Oh, if, if oh com- I see. So this is the situation at hand. This is why it's been two, three people have mentioned him already so far. Well, I'm um, sure he has a reasonable take on it. Look, I mean, he has to go after Chris Stuckman. He has to. It is his livelihood, his yeah. bread and butter that Chris Stuckman is attacking the very concept of by just not wanting to talk shit on a movie. Yeah. That he did. <laughs> to actually, uh, to, well, I mean, it, it seems like he just wants to, like, you know, maybe if we're going to even attack movies like Madam Web, maybe mm-hmm. make sure to focus it on the studio executive system that, that create it and the executives who are disinterested in pumping money into it rather than the actual artists who are just getting shit on. Yeah. Because the artists, artists probably go through hell making a movie that they're not proud of and not happy with. And then, you know, when it comes out, they just get shit on because it's not a good movie. And then, you know, everybody's like, why do you make a bad movie? It's like, they had no way to prevent it. Like, Jesus, <laughs> there, there's so much that goes into making a studio movie. Um, it's not just they hire people and let them do whatever the fuck they want. I'm looking at a stream right now. It's called The Assassination of Chris Stuckman by the coward Chris Stuckman. And he has Nerdrotic and Critical Drinker along with some other... Look, uh, yeah. we don't need to... Look, this is a thing, okay? Let's face it. Like, what are you talking about? We've known that. It's been obvious for fucking mm-hmm. years that Sony's Spider-Man <laughs> properties are fucking shit that nobody... Like, if yeah. they manage to eke out a halfway entertaining one, it's like, good job, Sony. You know, you get yeah. a pat on the head. That's the thing, the Venom ones are halfway entertaining, not because they're good, because Tom Hardy's doing some weird fucking shit with his performance. Like, it's yeah. not, like, good. <laughs> no. I mean, even like, like the Andrew Garfield, those movies, like, those are also Sony properties. Those are also kind of... Like, like I, I mean, they're, they're better than a lot of this, like, like the, the stuff that they've been putting out recently. But it's like, <laughs> just in general, like, compared to, to Marvel Studios, Sony has really yeah. not been doing very well with spider-man or the just exception like, of their characters. animated stuff yeah i see people asking like how do we distinguish the, but like you know somebody is this guy who was in chat earlier kind of having a meltdown several comments in bob's chat uh before the stream even started uh is it the studios that uh, make a movie good or is it the actors and directors well everybody everything contributes to a thing yeah. every element of a thing is part of the thing however look like i've been saying nobody woke up there wasn't a screenwriter that was like, yeah, I'm inspired Ooh. to write a fucking movie about Madam Web, a character. There, yeah, there wasn't a literally... director saying, I, I'm gonna put together a pitch and pitch a character it to the that studio has never about had Madam Web. I'm excited. She's never had her own title, she's never even been in her own fucking comic book. She literally just shows up to be basically a plot contrivance, yeah, so that she can yeah. go, oh, the web of fate and Spider Man, and you just watch blah blah blah. Like, that is not something that anybody was inspired creatively to do. It is obviously a studio thing of them looking at their list of characters and prop, you know, IP that or falls under the Spider-Man IP, and they go, mm-hmm. uh, "Madam Web." I don't know. And then when there's these other Spider Girls, there's other girls that are Spider Girls. We can take all those and just shove them in a fucking movie, mm-hmm. and then they hire people to make that happen who accept the jobs because they need because everybody needs a job, and these are creatives mm-hmm. who, you know, uh, whether or not they're any Build good or not, I don't, me. I don't know. You know, if they have, yeah, exactly. They might be really great with the right material, but um, yeah. And then, so that's how this came about. It's pretty clear that's how it came about. And that's what Chris Duckman is criticizing in his video. And people are fucking losing their minds because he doesn't yes. want to just spend an hour shitting on the movie. Like, it, you know, this dude in chat earlier before stream started was like, oh, I just wish he had the balls to say it was bad. And it's like, he has said it's bad. Yeah, he's saying it's yeah. bad. He's not reviewing it. He said he doesn't want to review bad movies. <laughs> so yeah, like yeah. he's saying it. Y'all are just mad that he doesn't want to fucking shit talk it. And you've probably already watched 50 videos there's, of people shit talking it. You know? Yeah. I already say there's 50 video. There's at least 50, like tons of videos of people shit talking it. Hell, I shit talk it a little bit on my podcast last week. But like we need to. Oh, it looks like other like dog he's shit. Just, saying, <laughs> just like, you know analyze it thoughtfully don't just shit on the the director or the writers because there's lots of people doing that and one thing i think is definitely worth noting is uh while this is uh sj clarkson's directorial debut as a feature film uh before this her biggest uh credit was working on the jessica jones series now i don't know what you guy what your guys thoughts on it but i thought the jessica jones series was pretty fucking good um, and Jessica Jones is definitely a character, a comic book character where someone could read that and say, Ooh, I have a great idea on how to handle something like that. Cause there's a lot of meat to the Jessica Jones story. Not so much Madam Web. It could be that maybe she did, you know, accept the job because 
hey, this is something I could actually work with this idea, even though I didn't come up yeah. with it. And this is a studio fucking mandated movie. Maybe I can make this, you know, really good. And then she does her best with it. But then Sony is just look, they're they're known for kind of like uh, getting their fingers in the pie almost as much as yeah. uh, Warner Brothers was. I mean, uh, look yeah. at what happened with Spider-Man 3. Like, he, Sam Raimi came off Spider-Man 2. Great fucking movie. My, still my all-time favorite superhero movie. And then he follows it up with Spider-Man 3. And then you find out all the studio meddling behind the scenes, how he didn't want Venom in it. You can really tell he didn't want Venom in that movie. And if they yeah. can meddle with Sam Raimi, of course they can meddle with S.J. Clarkson in her directorial debut. We've seen this stuff play out over and over again. If you're not familiar with the 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 history of like, especially like superhero movies and like the production meddling and stuff like that, or even outside of superhero movies, just genre movies or whatever, you should kind of learn about that stuff because uh, you can start to see patterns emerge and you can see things repeat themselves. And it's not just all like, um, I don't know, as simplistic as some people want to make it out. But 